Previously on A Moment of Grace. The greatest mistake any man or woman can make is to live and die without ever experiencing the new birth. Because if you live and die without ever experiencing the new birth, you will forfeit eternal life and you will spend eternity separated from God. the diagnosis the diagnosis of the human condition is that you came into this world with a birth defect called sin that has cut you off from God's life and therefore you are what dead spiritually now all of us have some experience with dead things dead people when someone dies how many options do you have regarding that person well one is to bury them So everybody you know who has ever died, no matter how much you love them, because you are who you are, the only option you have when you're dealing with a dead person is to bury it, get rid of it, and walk away. Because once it's dead, there are no other options but to bury it. But assuming you are God, if you are God, then you have You don't have a hundred options. You have two options. Only two. You can take that which is dead and you can do what what you and I do. Bury it, get rid of it, walk away from it and leave it dead. Or if you're God and you have the power to give life back to it, you have a second option. You can give life to it. There, even God has no other option when it comes to something that's dead. Only two options. Say only two options. God can bury me. God can put me away forever. That's called spiritual death. That's called eternal death, a.k.a. hell. Separated from God forever because it's dead. Disconnected from God forever. That's one option. God could have chosen that option, but thank God he didn't. God says, because I'm God, I'm not limited only to one option. I have a second option. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the only other option. God God himself has no other option. When you're dealing with a dead person, only two options, bury it or give it life. And so God being God in Jesus, has a second option, and that option is to give new life to that which has died. That is what we call the new birth, a.k.a. eternal life. Did you get this? Do you understand why Jesus is saying to Nicodemus, Nicodemus, you must be born again? Because one, there's only one way into the kingdom. Somebody who knows from experience Jesus, just like you only got one way into this earth, you only got one way into the kingdom of God, you got to be born into it. And secondly, you got to be born again because that's the only option. Either God puts you away forever, aka separated from him, hell, spiritual damnation, eternal damnation, that's one option. Nothing more to do with you because you're dead. You're disconnected. You got no life. I can't do anything with you will separate it forever or give you life. And it is the giving of life to you, this new life that God chooses to give to you when you believe in Jesus, that is called being born again. My prayer is that every single person here today has received the new life that Jesus gives. Because if you have not received that life, then you are still in the condition you were born with. You're still dead, spiritually. Here is the second parallel that I want you to see. 
First parallel between this man and, and every man is that we're all dead, come into this world with a birth defect, right? And we can't, we can't, we can't, we can't deny that. And the birth defect for all of us is this sin thing that cuts us off from God, causing us to be spiritually dead. But here's the second parallel. Here's the second parallel. If you're going to receive the life that God wants to give you so that you're born again, then it's going to require humility on your part. This man is at the gate. He knows he cannot walk. And so he's at the gate, admitting his need and asking for help. He knows he is totally dependent upon somebody else for his sustenance. And without help from others, he would certainly have died long time before. So there is a humility that was required for him to get the help he needed. And he was humble enough to say, I cannot help myself, please help me. And looked up and received that which was being given to him. Something he could not give to himself. He was humble enough to admit that he was powerless and reach out in humility and faith and receive what was being given to him. That's the second parallel. Over the course of many years, I have come to see that one of the greatest obstacles, if not the greatest obstacles to salvation, one of the reasons why most people who are unsaved continue to remain in that state of spiritual death is because they are unwilling to admit how powerless they are spiritually to help themselves. They're unwilling to humble themselves and accept the fact that they're not just bad or they're not just, they're not good people that just simply need to be a little bit better. They're unwilling to accept the fact that they are dead spiritually, that they are spiritually powerless and that there's nothing good in them that could ever qualify them for the kingdom of God. So they keep trying to save themselves and are unwilling to receive this gift from God through Jesus. They cling to the idea that there's something in them that is good enough for God to accept them. This lack of humility and unwillingness to depend upon God completely. This lack of humility and unwillingness to admit your powerlessness when it comes to salvation. This lack of humility and this idea that somehow you are not that bad and you are better than most and you are therefore good enough. This lack of humility is what keeps most people in the state of spiritual death. Because until you admit your need, you can't receive what God gives. God resists the proud, but God gives grace to the humble. If you are going to receive this life from God that you need, you have to humble yourself and admit you need it, and in simple faith, receive what God gives you. And stop trying to do for yourself what you cannot do. Salvation requires a miracle. Amen? Listen to me. Let me remind you again. If it were possible for you or me or anyone to somehow enter the kingdom of God on the basis of our good works or how well we're keeping the commandments or how religious we are, if that was the case, then why did Jesus say to Nicodemus of all people, Nicodemus, even though you've done all of this and you've lived such a moral life and so you're such a religious man, even though you're so committed to the Ten Commandments, Nicodemus, you're still not in the kingdom. If Jesus said that to Nicodemus, then clearly Jesus does not believe that you or me or anybody 
can by his own efforts enter the kingdom. Let's humble ourselves. Jesus said, you got to become like a little child if you're going to enter the kingdom. Let's humble ourselves so that we can see the kingdom. Humble ourselves like a little child. Admit our powerlessness and receive this gift of life that Jesus gives. Still to come on A Moment of Grace. When the life of Christ comes on the inside of you, the life of Christ changes you. Say hallelujah. If any man be in Christ, he becomes a new creation. So this man now has a new walk. He has a new talk. Praise God. He has a new attitude instead of complaining. He has a new relationship with God. He has a new way of relating to God. He is transformed. And this is a picture, ladies and gentlemen, of the kind of transformation that God by his spirit does in a man or woman who receives Christ and is born again. God begins to change you. Hello, I'm Bishop Darlington Johnson. Are you looking for a church that is warm and welcoming? Where the people are committed to building community and developing devoted disciples of Jesus Christ? Then Bethel World Outreach Church is the church for you. At Bethel, the Word of God is made simple and clear so that you can understand it and apply it to your daily life. The presence of God is experiencing powerful worship, and soul winning is our business. So come and join us this Sunday at Bethel World Outreach Church, City of Hope. Hope to see you soon. So there's a parallel in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the fact that we're all born with this death gene and this, this spiritual defect. Here's another parallel. If we're going to be saved, if we're going to receive the miracle, we've got to humble ourselves and admit we have it. Let's stop resisting. Let's stop being proud. Let's stop being deceived. By the works of the flesh, no man will ever be justified. Your problem is too serious for that. You don't need medicine. You need a miracle. And if you need a miracle, only God can do miracles. If you need a miracle, somebody has to do it for you. You cannot do it on yourself. Think about it. If you are dead, then a dead person needs life. But that life must come from outside of him. Because if you're dead, you don't have life. So if you need life, that life must come from outside of you. So it, is, so it is not within your power to give yourself life. You didn't give yourself your first life. You're born because someone gave you life. And your new birth is going to happen because someone else, not you, gives you life. Are you hearing me? It is without, it is beyond it, your power to give yourself life. You need life. And this is what Jesus says. Jesus says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. He says, the thief has come to steal, to kill, and destroy, but I have come that you may have life. For God so loved the world, he said, that he gave his only begotten son, so that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He who has the son has life. Jesus is saying, you need life. I know you do. You want to get in the kingdom. The only way to get in the kingdom is to be born into it. You don't have that life. I have it. And if you will humble yourself, I will give it to you. What you need is a miracle, and I'm the miracle worker. Amen. Amen. There is only one person who has the power to produce the miracle we call the new birth. His name is Jesus. Nicodemus said to Jesus, he says, teacher, I know you must be sent from God because no man can do the miracles you have done except God be with him. When it comes to the new birth, there's only one person who has the power to produce it and it's Jesus. That's why at the grave of Lazarus, he stood and he boldly proclaimed, even though he's dead, yet shall he live. Because I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will not perish. Oh my goodness, nobody else can make that claim and then validate it by his actions. Jesus didn't just talk at the grave of Lazarus. He proved 
that what he was saying was true because after he proclaimed I'm the resurrection of life and if you believe in me you will never die the next thing he did he said roll the stone away and he said Lazarus come forth and this man who had been dead to the point where he was now stinking immediately life came into him and he who was dead was now alive again in the name of Jesus it will be so for you you who are dead spiritually today you will call on the name of Jesus and life will come into you and you will pass from death to life in the name of Jesus today you will be born again say hallelujah because the one who can give you life is alive and the one who can give you life is here ready to give it to you today now I I, 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 I want you to see the transformation that took place when this man received life into his legs because now we're going to see a picture of what the life of God can do once it enters a person. Remember, he couldn't do anything with these legs and he was powerless to save himself. But one day, Peter and John representing the Lord said, look on us. And when he looked upon them in humility, he received life into his leg. And watch what happened once the life of Christ got on the inside of him. He had always, always, from the time he was born, he had never once been able to stand. He was always forced to sit. But after the life comes into him, the life of Christ, he who once could only sit is now able to stand. You didn't hear me transformation when the life of Christ comes into you it transforms you so 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 he goes from just being able to sit to where now he can stand from not being able to walk to where he not only walks but he's able to run he's able to jump he's able to leap watch what else happens before the miracle you found him always outside of the temple begging after the miracle you find him inside the temple praising oh my goodness oh my goodness oh my goodness so now he's found a new relationship with God and he's found a new way of relating to God no longer from a distance no longer from afar but now he has a new relationship with God and a new way of relating to God so that now he's relating to God up close intimately with gratitude. So there's a change and a transformation in so many areas of his life. Now we see he has a new walk. Oh, you're not hearing me. Because I'm not just talking about him. I'm talking about the changes that take place when you get born again. When the life of Christ comes into you, the life of Christ changes you from the inside out. Some changes are instantaneous and drastic. Some are gradual and take a while. But when the life of Christ comes on the inside of you, the life of Christ changes you. Say hallelujah. If any man be in Christ, he becomes a new creation. So this man now has a new walk. He has a new talk. Praise the God. He has a new attitude instead of complaining. He has a new relationship with God. He has a new way of relating to God. He is transformed. And this is a picture, ladies and gentlemen, of the kind of transformation that God, by his spirit, does in a man or woman who receives Christ and is born again. God begins to change you. Are you listening to me? And now the changes that begin to manifest in your life are not the cause of your salvation, but they are now the result of your salvation. Amen? You're beginning to talk differently. You're beginning to walk differently. You're having another attitude. You're beginning to relate with God. Not as someone who's my father way up in heaven. No, when you talk to God now, there's a consciousness that God lives on the inside of you. There's an intimacy you got. The spirit of God is now bearing witness with your spirit that you are a child of God. Are you hearing me? You're communing with God. At a, at, a, at, a, at a personal level now. Are you listening to me? There's a change that has taken place. It is a new life of Christ on the inside of you, working in you, both the will and do God's pleasure, conforming you more and more into his image. If you claim to have received the new life, 
but there are no changes, that will be an indication that you never really was born again. Again, some changes are gradual, but there will be changes. Are you hear me? It's possible that a person may just profess Christ with their lips and not with their heart. And so they never possess Christ. But when you profess Christ with your lips, confessing him as Lord, and with your heart, believing in your heart, ladies and gentlemen, the profession of Christ with the mouth and the heart produces a change and transformation that others will begin to see. Amen. And so when this man began to be transformed, the people said, isn't this the same man that we saw sitting and begging? Something has happened to him. He's not the same. All of a sudden we see him now, he's walking. Instead of begging, he's praising. Now instead of sitting, he's leaping. Instead of being at the temple gate, he's inside the temple. The man is changed and people can see him. The new birth begins to produce a transformation in your life. Hallelujah. And as you allow that life to work in you, you get to you just start changing, you gotta start changing, start changing. And your friends and your family members and those who knew you then will begin to say, You are not the same. There's something changing in your life, and you are actually changing for the better. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy that it will happen in somebody's life today. Somebody's gonna get born again and begin this process of transformation as the life of Christ in you changes you from glory to glory. I know the first half of this man's story before the miracle. The spiritual death and birth defect is true of all of us. I also know, unfortunately, that the second part, the miracle, the transformation I just described, is not true of some of us here because there's some of us who have not yet received our own personal miracle. We're still, for whatever reasons, spiritually dead. Perhaps we've been following the, 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 the prescription of religion and, and, and thinking that that was the right course of treatment for our condition. And so we may be here today like Nicodemus and you're still not in the kingdom. There's some people here, but here's the good news. I know right now where I stand that if you're not in the kingdom, today, today, if you will hearken to this message of grace, today, if you will believe this gospel that you just preached, today, if you will make the decision to stop trusting in yourself and trusting in your works and, and admit your powerlessness and receive the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ, today, you'll be born again. And today, you will pass from death to life. It can happen today. And I'm about to give you an opportunity to experience the new birth if you have not. But let me end with this. Jesus said in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, so that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. The new birth can be yours today. You can be born again today. But the basis of the new birth is threefold. First of all, the new birth can be yours because of God's love. God so loved. If God had not loved you and loved me, he could have left us in our spiritual dead state. And just, he could have created another world, another people. He didn't need to do anything. But because of his love, he was unwilling to walk away from us. He understood he had another option. An option that's not available to man, but it was available to him as God. And because of his great love, he chose to exercise the second option, which was to make life available to you and me again. Thank God for his love. Here's the second basis for the new birth today. It is the blood of Jesus. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus' blood is essential. His death is absolutely essential. There is no salvation apart from his blood being shed. Without the shedding of blood, there can be no religion, no, no, no remission of sins. So religions that, that promise salvation without the blood of Jesus, they're offering a false uh, 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 recipe. It's not going to work because, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, we have sinned. Amen? And because we have sinned, we are under judgment. And justice has to be satisfied. 
The wages of sin is death. Either the sinner must die or someone qualified has to die in his stead. Jesus had to die to make salvation and a new birth available. Raise your head and say, thank you, Jesus, for dying in my place. The love of God, the blood of Jesus, and lastly, the response of man. That he who believes, listen, God has done everything to make the new birth possible. But you and I have to respond. And we got to respond with humility and with faith. There's some things God can do for you and there's some things God cannot do for you. God cannot believe for you. He can send us with a message and give us the words to speak to help you believe. And I hope you've heard some things today that helped you to believe. But at the end of the day, you've got to make a choice to believe or not to believe what you heard. You can leave here and still think, oh, there are other ways to God. I don't need Jesus and be lost forever. Or you can choose to believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And that if you believe on him, you will pass from death to, unto life. God cannot believe for you. You've got to believe. God cannot humble himself for you or humble you for himself, humble you for you. You've got to humble you for you and admit your need. If today you heard his voice and you are conscious of the fact that you're not born again, I'm not saying you're not a good person, a moral person, a religious person, but you're not born again and you know it because you've never truly ever trusted Jesus completely as your Savior and Lord. You somehow have still been trying to get saved through your good works. Somehow you still believe there are many ways to God and you don't have to be born again. That born again is for those, those religious fanatics. Today, if you will humble yourself, you can be born again today, pass from death to life. We want to thank you for spending this time today with our family at Bethel World Outreach Church. You just watched a portion of this message by Bishop Darlingston Johnson, our senior pastor. We hope this broadcast today was an encouragement to you. We believe that the Word of God is a powerful seed that can bring true transformation in our lives, which is why we want to sow the product on your screen into your life. Simply call the number on the screen or go online right now and we'll send you this message in its entirety for free right away. Just ask for the offer number on your screen. We believe God wants the best for your life. We hope you'll continue to watch and support this broadcast so that each week people can be blessed through God's Word. Don't forget to call or go online now to receive this free offer. May God richly bless you.